delighted to welcome to the show independent peer, former Labour MP, Baroness Kate Howey. Good afternoon to you, Kate. Good afternoon, Julie. Thank you so much for joining us. What do you make of this uh, this investment summit, and particularly the decision to invite, you know, the bosses of P&O Ferries, DP World, who happily sacked 800 staff two years ago, and quite right, and then replaced them with agency staff on below minimum wage. Quite rightly, were called by not just the then Tory Transport Secretary Grant Shapps, but the now Transport Secretary Louise Hay, rogue operators, but not inviting the world's richest mm. man, whose SpaceX rocket has just done the most extraordinary sci-fi landing uh, uh, yesterday, Elon Musk. What do you make of it? Well, I watched about 10 times Me last too. night that wonderful, wonderful little video of the, of the, uh, the, the, the rocket being absolutely, you know, right into the correct place. Yeah. And you just amazed at that. So, I, I mean, my, my view on all these investment summits is that actually they don't necessarily bring the results that the, uh, the hype says is going to happen uh, a lot of it is about making the people running it feel good you know i'm yeah. sure jonathan reynolds had a great uh, feeling this morning when he was addressing it it makes the prime minister feel that he's he's doing something really really important but you know to have the whole thing almost overshadowed by the fact that they've mishandled this um, musk situation so badly i mean why was he not invited apparently he did say that he would like to come i know he doesn't usually attend many yeah. of these conferences around the world but um it should have been an invitation and it just it shows a kind of uh, it's sort of almost pathetic short-sightedness that and, and pettiness yeah because they don't like something that he said and they don't like the fact that he is supporting Donald Trump, um, they didn't invite him. So I'm not sure that we'll get a lot of extra investment. I think anything that gets announced in the next day or two from the conference will have already been decided, will have yeah. already been agreed, and it's all about making Keir Starmer and the Labour government and the public, more yeah. importantly, feel that something's actually happening. And I think that's quite difficult yeah. after two days. And, and even the, there's a letter in the Times today, much faded, it's on the front page and, and, and it's been brought up by you know, the business secretary, Jonathan Reynolds and others. You know, this letter from a load of, you know, major global companies, the JP Morgans and others saying, yeah, Britain's ripe for investment. But you know that these things are organised by the government. That's how these things work. Yeah, so they, they have to have... They won't be, you know, last week they would have been sitting down and ticking boxes about exactly what could be positively announced coming out of it. And a lot, most of those things will have been, you know, decided some time ago. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I attended the investment conference. It was held about six months, no, nearly nearly a year ago now in, in Northern Ireland, Best NI, which with Kennedy, there are the envoy over and they were going to bring in all this amount of money to Northern Ireland from America if if uh, only the executive went back well of course the executive's been back uh, uh, quite a number of months now yeah. and i haven't seen any sign really of that specific american investment so yeah. a lot of it is hype and when you look at what's happening to small businesses the, the worry now that they, they have about the fact that the um, employers national insurance is going to go up and the government's saying well we didn't say in the manifesto we only we didn't say employers would go up you know yeah. people didn't uh, didn't read that into what was said in the manifesto and then the more worrying thing, which I'm, you know, I'm sure at some stage you'll discuss in great depth, is the, is the whole question of this new workers' rights bill, which, yeah. you know, in theory, sounds brilliant. Oh, isn't it good? A Labour government's bringing in all these to protect extra protections. The reality is, of course, the people who will really suffer from it will be the small businesses. And, yeah. and it is quite worrying some of the things that are being suggested in that. So it's not a great time for business and particularly small business. And if the government really wanted to get investment, they'd cut corporation tax way down. Yeah, and also not yet yeah, not plan as we really expect them to put up, as you mentioned, employer national insurance. And mm. what about this, this talk about getting rid of the regulation and the red tape? I mean, this is something we've heard about so many times. And this you know, classic thing from Keir Starmer, this is what he said to the, the, the conference this morning. He said, we've got to look at regulation where it is needlessly holding back the investment to take our country forward, where it is stopping us building the homes, the data centres, warehouses, grid connectors, roads, train lines, you name it, then mark my word we will get rid of it we'll rip out the bureaucracy that blocks investment we'll make sure that every regulator in this country takes growth as seriously as this room does i think well that sounds great i don't believe for a nanosecond any of that will happen no it's it's always something that 
governments of all complexions yes. promised. And of course, after we left the European Union, there was the opportunity to get rid of so many things that had been added in, uh, you know, and then we, we being the British, always actually uh, make sure that anything that's in the law has to be, um, you know, invoked even stronger, uh, more strongly than in the rest of the, the European Union. Uh, but now they haven't, they haven't really changed uh, an awful lot. And I think if you go and talk to any small business, they could give you a list of at least a dozen things that would just make a difference to the way they have to run their lives and their business. And, and I, I can't see very much of this happen because th th there's an instinct, isn't there, in government and in institutions for bureaucracy. They like it because it keeps people in jobs. It keeps people sort of ticking boxes. And we've become a tick box culture. Oh, right well, we really have. Business. We really, really have. And again, an employment terror rights bill. It looks like yeah. it's set, set to get even worse. What do you make of, um, I mean, what are the other concerns a lot of people have had is about um, you know, the freebie gate and, and all this sort of, you know, just ben, you know benefits for, for ministers and the like. And this has all come up with Taylor Gate, as it's now known. We always like a gate, don't we? Keir Starmer is now facing calls for an independent inquiry to what happened when Taylor Swift's mother and manager apparently demanded that if, her sh if she didn't get a sort of v VIP police outriders and escort to, to her Wembley shows that the shows wouldn't go ahead. Both uh, the Home Secretary of Cooper via her husband Ed Balls, former obviously cabinet minister but now uh, a TV presenter um, and uh, and the Prime Minister and his wife got freebie tickets. In fact pretty much most of the shadow, most of the, the, the now cabinet um, got freebies to Taylor Swift's concert. But now it's emerged that not only the Home Secretary but also the Attorney General Lord Herner both actually um, sort of basically lobbied the Met Police to to change their mind, having said, we don't believe that Taylor Swift is in need of this, um, this police escort, which is the level that we would give to, you know, a visiting president or, or, or the, you know, or the, or the, the king. Um, we don't think it's necessary. And they were basically sort of, you know, lobbied to rethink. And then she did get this level of police uh, uh, escort, which costs a fortune to do. Um, do you think we need to have a proper inquiry into that? Is it a scandal? Does it matter? What do you think? Well, I think I think you know a, a proper inquiry would cost a lot of extra money, and I'm not sure the police and everything have the time or the inclination. But I think what it does, you know, the, it highlights again the kind of one way of doing things for some people and, and not doing for others. Now, it, it is true that at you know football matches, some international matches, um, a police car will escort the, the team bus to get through the crowd slightly yeah. more quickly. But that's hardly what you would call what this ultra VIP uh, situation seemed to be. And it seemed to be, you know, absolutely ridiculous. And I, I suppose it's because so many members of the cabinet were going that they um, they didn't want, you know, her to be late. Would, would have been dreadful. Well, but, but, but that does seem to be what it, it feels like, doesn't it? Now, we know there had been this, this, this terror threats uh, against uh, the concerts in Austria, but they were against the fans. I mean, it was the fans who were at risk, not Taylor Swift herself. That's yeah. what I find extraordinary. Yeah. So I must be about the only person that if I'd been offered a free ticket, I wouldn't have taken it. Oh, I, I would have, but I just, I genuinely, no, I no, can't I believe mean, going to a Taylor Swift concert, discovering it's like, just Labour MPs. Yeah, it's well, I just it. didn't, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know, it seems almost, you know, sacrilege to say it, but I'm not a Taylor Swift fan, so I wouldn't allowed, have, you know, been interested. That. That you're allowed to say. I, yeah, I just, I just find it extraordinary. Virtually everyone seems to be one of these. Freebies. I think, it, I think it, I think it's been very damaging to um, the Labour, the new Labour government yeah. that this started. This happened so quickly, and particularly, you know, Keir Starmer himself, and the whole question of the clothes and, and yeah. the glasses. And I just could not believe that. I really couldn't. I mean, I do think it's quite okay for people to donate to, you know, the the party, the political parties, but to. To take that personal thing, I thought I find it quite distasteful. It's just all very, very tacky, isn't it? Especially for a man who is himself actually very wealthy. Can I ask you just finally about this uh, contract which Labour apparently is signing for 10 more years? Uh, of, a, of a processing uh, of, of centres being kept open and run uh, to process channel migrants arriving. Now, we had Tories saying they would stop the boats. Keir Starmer's pretty much said he'll stop the boats by smashing the gangs. OK, no one's expected them to have done it in the first 100 days. But they've basically look, got a £500 million contract with a couple of companies to carry on these processing. If they're going to smash the gangs and solve the problem of illegal migrants coming over the channel, why would they need to have these processing centres run at this scale? 
Well, why do it need 10 years? I mean, that's that's a, if, if we have 10 more years of the of the numbers of people coming in, that just looking how many came in even in one day last week, and when you get some good weather, there'll be a, a, a lot more. Then you know, really, it it looks like they have no confidence whatsoever, yeah. as most people have no confidence in actually the government solving this. I asked a question in the Lords last week, which I thought was actually a very common sense question, which was basically saying, has our government been, with all this money they're giving to France, have they ever actually gone and complained about the way the migrants are being living, their conditions in camps and yeah. tents, and it's shocking, which we would never be allowed to do because of our obsession with um, the European Court of exactly. Human Rights. And, then, and yet they, no wonder, people want to come over here when they know how they're going to be treated. That's a very big pull factor. Yeah. Governments just don't want to face that. Although I have to say the minister, David Hansen, who I have a lot of time for, did actually say that he thought the conditions in the, those camps were shocking. Yeah. Well, if they're that shocking, no wonder people are trying to get over to us where they're going into probably going yeah. to a fairly reasonable hotel. Indeed. I have to, I was, well, there was a point. There was some of them were in for, four-star hotels. It seems to be this plan to smash the gangs. If he thinks it's going to take at least 10 years, maybe he's just waiting for all the gangland people to just <laughs> to just die off. Maybe that he's just waiting for the smugglers to all die off. That's his, that's his plan. I'm not sure it's yeah. going to work. Kate, it's always such a pleasure to see you. Independent peer, former Labour MP, Baroness Hoey there. Uh,